Phil Spaulding, rock star, genius, guitar dealer, and bass player extraordinaire. Welcome to, what's it called? Musicians Funnies, yes. Okay, great. Musicians Funnies, my God. I tell you, I think I, I, think I could just about qualify Mr. Niles, Dr. Niles, in fact. Doc, I am a doctor, bend over and cough. You've been a professional musician all your life. You've toured all over the world. You've played with some of the biggest names in show business. But tell me this, why do you think it is that musicians have this particular shared sense of humor, which has a certain quality to it? Why do you think they have this? I think it's because we are forced into a position where we live such an unusual life. You know, that, you know, our working hours, the way we have to travel sometimes, you know, the rubbish we have to eat sometimes. Oh, yes. You know, it's just abnormal. It's an abnormal way of living. Yes. Um, if anyone's ever been on, on a tour for a year mm. and done the same show every night now, now check this out okay right okay you're doing your 84th show okay yeah but the audience that you're playing in front of it's their first show correct and you got to produce it man mm. you know you got to come up with the goods you know yes and uh after a while i think um that shared sense of humor you're talking about along with probably uh, uh, an increase in drinking and uh, maybe use of uh, drugs as well. Um, and that's not for everybody, you know. Oh, no, and, and uh, to be fair, to be fair, accountants and uh, company executives and shoe salesmen also drink and take drugs. Yeah, and you know what? The guys I've met like that, can't bear it actually they can't carry it as well as we can uh strangely enough i mean um i don't know if he's gonna see this or not um my dentist uh, <laughs> I, helped, I helped my dentist out yeah uh who, who was um who was partying a little mu uh, you know a little too much let's say and uh he did all my implants for free uh, and he had the money as well, you know. Yeah, he was, yeah. uh, he was, and, uh, and I'm sure that story is not a lie because it must be the whole tooth and nothing but the tooth. Radio Richard, tell me about something funny. Well, it depends if you think it's funny or not. I mean, it's funny from one, you know, where, where there is, it's funny and it's unfunny. And also maybe sometimes sad, um, but you know very well that I I had a heroin habit, um, and I don't want to glorify it. No, um, it was really mostly um, I have I had over twelve years on it, and in the last ten years I was trying to get off it, and. Uh, uh, there, it wasn't fun. It was hell. Uh, and you've got to remember, you know, when you go on, on do, you're doing gigs like we do, uh, your dealer doesn't go on tour with you, you know, doesn't follow you. No. So every time I had to go, for example, to the States, I would go down to see a private doctor somewhere uh, in the usual place in London where they're all gathered in the same area. And uh, I would um, sometimes plead for substitutes to take with me um, because I couldn't take any heroin, obviously, you know, I mean, that's gonna get you uh, probably 50 years jokey as soon as you get in here, as soon as someone catches you at customs. Okay. And I mean, I mean, mind you, I did do that. I did that. I put, I put I put two grams I, I I plugged two grams of heroin in the uh, you know in the I, uh, I knew you'd get to the bottom of this somehow 
the bottom, exactly. And uh, I went through customs in New York like that, you know, uh, one time. And like, I'm looking back and I'm thinking, I mean, this is crazy. You know, if I'd have got caught, I'd have, got, I'd have been taken straight to Rikers Island. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so I, I've got, to, I'm going to LA, right? And I've got all these substitutes. It was Robbie Williams, um, Robbie Williams' album, Escapology, which is miraculously, is an amazing album, track for track. I think, I still think it's the best album he's ever done. And I don't think he's done anything that's come near that album since, okay? Now, I'm not saying it's, be, it's because I was there, um, <laughs> well, I would say that I would say that, but I had a lot to do with it. You know, I was <clears throat> I, I was there the whole time. I was on the whole album from the demos uh, at the beginning of two thousand and one, and I went to LA and stayed there, stayed with Rob. Um, the, the 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 funny story I was going to say was that now my substitutes were uh, coding. Okay, so I could take codeine because that would stop me withdrawing from heroin um, and uh, diazepam, which, you know, gives you like a calm, nice feeling, you know, uh, but, but, but um, the thing about this is, is that you know, doctors are giving these things to drug addicts, you know, and it's like if, if two makes you feel good, I mean, 20 is going to make you feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I overdid it on the diazepam in the Four Seasons. You know the Four Seasons down um, La Cienega? Um, I know it well. You know the one where there's a 7-Eleven there's a, there's a opposite it, you know? I don't know if a 7-Eleven is still there. I was there when that 7-Eleven was... Uh, uh, there was a gunfight, actually. <laughs> Los Angeles, I mean, it's like, America really is a, a lot like what you see on the TV. I mean, you know, I mean, anyway, so I've overdone it on these Valiums. Probably had like 10 of them or something like that, you know. And uh, I've just um, fallen asleep in my, in the position I was leaning on with a cigarette, a lit cigarette in my hand, okay? And then I've just crashed, okay? And then I've been woken up because I was getting burnt. And I look around, my bed's on fire. Like, it's on fire, you know? And I'm looking around going, oh, wow, man, this is great. Wow, look at that. Well, oh my God, look at that. I did, oh my God, you know. Oh, I mean, oh, how crazy. I tell you that, that was expensive, that was. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. I tell you, hey, anyone watching this, don't set fire to your bed in the Four Seasons. No, I, I guess that that is a mistake. Uh, yeah, it's going to really hit you in the pocket, man. Uh, you yeah. know? You know, you would say money first, you know? Were, were you physically hurt? I mean, were you burned yourself? No, no, I, I, miraculously I wasn't, you know. I mean, through all this, and, and yet at the same time, I was making all these incredible records. Yeah. I did Joe Cocker. I did a great Joe Cocker album on uh, uh, on this, uh, you know, in this condition. Yeah. Uh, Jagger's album. Oh my God, a, I've got a great story for you, Big Jagger. Hey, check this out, right? We're doing this track, right? And we did a lot of it live. It was really, really great. He could obviously see what was going on because of his of his own experience with with his band for many years, you know. And uh, doing um, it's your lucky day. It's, it's, on, it's on Mick Jagger's solo album. It's your lucky day, baby. Okay. We kept coming up to this middle section. And every time we got to it, I went like this. I just went... Donk. Donk. Over. Donk. You know, like that. Every time... I don't know why this very bar we got to was like the middle where I was playing like a riff 
and like catching, I was playing with Yanto Ian Thomas, you know, and Yanto was carrying me, you know. I mean, I was still, I could still play great. I mean, you know, you've seen the conditions I've, I've been in sometimes when I've played, and you've seen me rip the hell out of out of, out of tracks when when I should be actually on my way to hospital or or the or the cemetery. Yes, you know. <laughs> so anyway. This was about five times in a row I did this that I went over when we got to this spot, exact spot in the track. And then what happened the last time that it happened was uh, I went over, Matt Clifford, who's mix, mix MD, and he's my friend, he got me the gig, you know, so he's like, oh my God, you know, and you're thinking the effect is going to go back on him because of, you know, this, my state. I, I went over and Matt came over and gave me this almighty kick. Oh, God. I don't know where he kicked. He just kicked me. and He kicked me in the thighs or the ass or somewhere like that, you know, and he really kicked me. And I got up and then I came back in. And do you know what? They left the gap on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how about that for create, creative recording? It was about eight bars. It was about eight bars. Right. Well, it's happened, it happened over over quite a very very quick period. And yeah. you see, I'd kind of got into this situation where where I was kind of regularly falling over at this spot. Yeah, yeah. And it was a bit like a sort of act, you know. I, I probably would have done it every night if we were on tour, you know, we get to that spot. Yeah. Um, but when you listen to the album and you get to that section, the bass goes. Yeah. The bass comes out. And then yeah. it suddenly comes back. <clears throat> right. Well, oh, <laughs> man. probably um, not something you want to do often, but... but that's... Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I tell you, when I saw Mick, well, the first time I saw Mick when I was clean, um, he was really gracious and kind to me. Really. You well, know? It's great to know. Yeah. He was, you know, and uh, uh, I mean, I can say this as well. How about this? You know, I went to see the Stones. Uh, I was in Oslo and they were playing the night. Of, one night, I had a, a, a night in Oslo. I went to McDonald's and in the queue behind me was Keith and I forget his second name. But he's a keyboard player and he's Cliff Richards MD. Unbelievable. We're queuing up in McDonald's, okay? Just and he said, Oh yeah, we got a night off. Cliff's been playing there, you know, he's sort of talking about that, that stuff. And he said, oh, what are you doing now? I said, I'm just bumming around and I'm going to see the Stones tonight, you know. So um anyway, so the, the, the Rolling Stones have everything, the Rolling Stones concerts, everything prepared. So the, the, the guests uh, looked after, you know, like the same as everybody else is looked after, you know. Obviously, the band have their own little idiosyncrasies, you know. So, but the, everybody else is looked after, you know. They've got a reputation, a reputation for class, you know. There was a little bus. I took Wendy, my friend, I took Wendy's son with me. I could only take one person. And my friend was like, oh, God, she was... Oh God! And then I said, "Look, listen, you've got to let me take this seventeen-year-old kid, because she'd been to loads of gigs. She's yeah. a, a bit of a sort of, a, you know, like a gig hound, you know." Yes. And she was my girlfriend. That I I would stay with in Oslo, okay. And like I said, no, 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 no. You really got to let me take the kid. You know, he's just the right age to see. To see it, you know, to see it like right up close and uh, and everything like that, you know. So they've got like a, a guests manager, okay, the Rolling Stones. And I was out in the crowd, you know, just wandering around with my past and this and the other. And the guests manager came to look for me and said, "Oh, why? Like, right, you know, your um, Matt wants you backstage, you know." And like all the sponsors, the bankers the the politicians and the actors and the musicians 
They're all upstairs in some room somewhere, eating smoked salmon and drinking champagne. Yes. I'm the only guest in the whole stadium in with in the dressing room with Keith and Ronnie. You know, the only guest. There's nobody else wandering around, no other guests, no nothing. Why do I get in you know why do they let you know why do they let me in that far you know right into the inside of everything that's going on you know maybe and they I, were looking for another bass player yeah well you know i mean like i mean i i mean i must say i think i could do a really good job so i go into ronnie's dressing room and he goes oh he says oh bill right and you know why he called me bill because <laughs> Ronnie was sober. He was at this point. He was he got sober. He was uh, five years sober, I think he was. He hadn't had a drink. He'd never been sober in his life. And uh, and I was clean. And and he said he shook hands and he said, "Well, we're actually meeting for the first time, aren't we? You know, as 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 actual people, you know, because I've been seeing him since 1977, and uh, and we've been." Well, I mean, seriously fried. Right, oh my God, the times I met Ronnie in the States, his club was just like, if you got in there, they just locked the door and they just they just stopped taking money behind the bar. And the people, you know, you could just wander behind the bar and, and pour yourself a drink, you know. And uh, you remember <clears throat> Keith, Keith Floyd, the celebrity chef? Yes, indeed, yes. Oh, man, oh. God, the night I was in Ronnie's club and he was there, he called me Bill because he couldn't hear that they said Phil. Okay. And that was it. I was Bill from then on. Right. And Ronnie, Ronnie called me Bill as part of the joke. Yeah. And when we were in Oslo and I met them and I saw me, he went, oh, Bill. He went, oh, God. And I said, oh, God. I believe you've got another funny story for us. And there's Elton John, you know, like doing the Lion King. I mean, that's got to be a height, a real height of my career. And I've seen Elton recently. And he is just such a great man, you know, such a great man. And no, I and managed to play bass. Just to clear, a, clarify, you, you played bass on that record and you did all the backing vocals. Yeah, I did backing vocals. Yeah, I did backing vocals with uh, Gary Barlow, uh -huh. uh, Rick Astley, nice, uh, Kiki D, nice, and Davy Johnson. Wow, well, they sound you fantastic. Know, you can really hear me leaning. I leant forward, man, as always. You know me. Yeah, I really stuck my neck out to get yeah. to the microphone. You know, when when we made that record, Elton was like five years clean. And I made a decision with Chuck Sabo, who's playing drums, that we weren't going to use any drums. How nice. On, on Elton's session. And the result of that was that I was scared effing shitless. Elton really is a... Well, I was going to say a king, but he probably wouldn't mind if I called him a a queen, but you know, <laughs> no, he's a great man. Went to see him in Italy, and do you know what? He dedicated uh, a song to me and Chris. Don't let the sun go down on me. And he said, "My friends are out in the audience." He said, "My producer Chris Thomas and one of my bass players Phil Spalding, and this song's for them." I mean, I mean, what? you know why why is that happened to me yeah why? you know what i think is what i think is nice about that story is the fact that both you and i have worked for a lot of stars and worked with all these different people who are world famous people and yet we never quite lose that great feeling of being fans at the same time yeah, yeah. I mean, I tell you what, playing with Elton, it's very, very hard. He's a busy player, man. You know, and when you got when you're playing the bass, you know, you've got a, a, a ten fingered piano player. Yeah, the he's got, he's got a heavy left hand, so you have to yeah, make the sure load you're with yeah. it. 
you've really got to be, you know, the, this is where you go back to simplicity is the best, you know? It's the f- fact that I've listened to Beethoven a lot, and Mozart, who is the pop star, and Beethoven's the my, the kind of Led Zeppelin of it all, I think, you know? <laughs> like Mozart's Elton, you know, and Beethoven's like Led Zeppelin, you know? Nice. And like, if you listen to that stuff, you know, that's that's where you learn how how music works, and we did the same thing on the circle of life. Now the circle of life that did something to me that's never happened before ever. We've got the track. I've gone super simple because the you know you know there's this left hand stuff that I've got to like kind of go in between of and stay out of if you like you know and uh, and, uh, and and I'm going for long notes as well so so you've kind of got a bass wash you know okay which which eases the the the, the your your feeling of listening to the track you know and so uh Elton's doing the lead vocal I was standing I don't know why that in that townhouse Townhouse Two, I think it was. There was a little, it was a little vocal booth, and there was, a, I suppose, a little entrance next to the booth. I actually stood there. About, I mean, if the glass panel wasn't there, I'd have been two foot away from it. And I, and I, I watched him from the side. I watched him, his mouth opening, everything, what he did, the yes. little, his little idiosyncrasies, you know, and Chris. Chris shouted to and he said, I think we've got it. I think we've got it. I think we can get it out of those three. Okay. And Elton said, um, he said, I'll tell you what, he said, Chris, let me have one more go. He said, let me have one. I, there's a couple of things I want to try that I haven't done yet. Um, and he, do you know what? He sang that song. <laughs> I stood next to the booth and cried, you know, it was so, it, I'm, I'm, I'm welling up now thinking about it, you know, wow, it, uh, and that's the take, that's how you make records that are going to be number one in the States, you know. So I'm now going to ask you a question. The subject is bass. Yeah. The, the question is Fender or any other maker fender every time fender fender right and then i'm going to say unless, unless there was some kind of weird thing happening that that that, that, that needed and then uh, i'm going to say p bass or jazz bass oh p bass for me harder to play keeps me in order <laughs> nothing keeps you in order phil That's no i know i know but i mean uh, no, no, none of the other bass players I know can play my basses, which is quite handy, really. So it stops them stealing them, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. My my second question is: invoice or cash? Uh, I like invoice. I like uh, I like to try to be proper, you know, and uh, I I declare cash as well. Um, I've got I've got a very good accountant. Jeez, I get it. Well, you're you're a straight shooter, apart from going through customs. So now, <laughs> uh, well, that was the, time ago. Here, here's the other one. Here's the yeah. question number three. I think it is clubs or concerts. Oh, concerts every time. I don't like clubs, crowds. Oh no. Whoa. I mean, I mean, it kind of reminds. First of all, it reminds me of drugs. All right, I see. Okay, here's another question. Number question number four. Practice or have lunch. And now, here's another question. Fry up or pizza? Yeah, uh, I like Turkish. You know, Turkish, Greek, where they got a lot of salads and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, if you're a vegetarian, you want a veggie night, you can usually get a good veggie meal in those restaurants. Yes. Uh, the meat's good if you like the meat, and the vegetables are good if you like the vegetables. Well, it's nice to know that, that in some area of your life, you've always been very health conscious. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's 
you know the other thing as well is that I always hated going through the night and not sleeping. Okay, I can't stand not having the days split, yeah. even if it's just two hours. Yes. You no, know, I've got to split my days. I've got to have some sleep, otherwise I yeah. go go bananas. And I think that that rule, if you like, in my life, I think it served me very well, considering the partying I've done. Well, that's the advice that you're getting from Phil Spaulding kids. Always get a good night's sleep. And also learn to sleep in, in cabs, <clears throat> airports yes airport seats yep yep i understand that's <laughs> horrible backstage conditions that have just been put thrown together with lumps of wood and a palm tree exactly learn to and and also make sure that you get there first before your other band members so you get the sofa yes and you rush out and then when they come want to sit on the sofa you say oh i've got to leave it out i've got a terrible hangover i've got Oh, God. I mean, Harvey Mason, I had a week with Harvey, okay? A whole an entire week, right, okay, uh, at Peter Gabriel's place. I want to hear what the advice he gave you about bass. What was the tips he gave you? Wait for the next beat. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Wait. You don't have to jump on top of the beat, you know? You don't have to... I mean, not, I don't even mean anticipate it, but, you know, my my mind's thinking in milliseconds, you know, and if I hear something, I can hit it so close that you'll think I've hit it at the same time. And it's, and it's because I've waited for the beat. And I've hit, and I've hit it. You can hear it if you listen to um, "Feel" by Robbie Williams. Um, by the way, again, I mean that's that. Oh, that was on the radio today when we were in the car. I said, "Oh God, I turned it right up." Wow, yeah. And I'm thinking, yeah, PPL, PPL, you know. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's a great track. I mean, yeah. again, you know, I'm listening to that, and I'm saying to Helen in the car. I'm just saying to her, perfect. It's just perfect. That's Beethoven, you know? That's Beethoven stuff, you know? Really, you know, uh, listen to, um, well, listen to anything, any of his symphonies, listen to, the, listen to what he does with the bass. I would say to any bass player, you could probably learn everything you need to learn if you listen to all Beethoven symphonies. And I, and I would definitely agree with that. And I would also say that's all we have time for, Phil, but that's been a very unusual and unique version of Musicians Funnies. There was a lot of very heartfelt stuff in there and uh, very glad to have you on Musicians Funnies, Phil. And we'll see you yeah. soon. Yeah, I mean, thank you for the invitation. I love doing this kind of thing, um, and it's great to uh, to be able to think, you know, retrospectively about things. And and I tell you what, it's actually just great to be here and be alive. Yes, I agree with that one. I should be dead, dead of yes. the dead. Yes. Oh yes. my! God, I should be dead. Oh my God! Oh, yes. oh God! Well, but since you're not, I guess it's time for dinner. Feeling a bit tired? Thinking of getting an early night tonight? Forget it, because I'm Richard Niles, and instead of sleeping, you could be lying in bed listening to my podcast, Radio Richard. Intriguing interviews and pulsating performances from master musicians like Chick Corea, Barry Manilow, Lyle Mays, and Michael McDonald. Hey girl, I want you to know I'm gone. Hey, don't be a wimp. You can sleep anytime. Don't miss a moment of the fun. Subscribe to Radio Richard.